was Huey Lewis and the News with their new single, The Power of Love, on Hill Valley Radio on October 26th, 1985. And I'm your host, Adam Yotam and he is basically going to be telling you on how much he really loves the film franchise, Back to the Future. Who's he, anyway? So, Back to the Future, why do I love it so much? Back to the Future, for me, is one of those electrifying screenplays and one of the most brilliantly executed science fiction films of all time. What makes Back to the Future so amazing and so nuanced is that electrifying connection between Dr. Emmett Brown, played by Christopher, Christopher Lloyd, and Martin McFly, played by Michael J. Fox. I think what really makes the script really good is that the screenwriters are having so much fun to have Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd keep, you know, it, touching with each other and electrifying and having that brilliant, awesome mix. Okay, first off, I'm going to start off by talking about Dr. Emmett Brown, who I think is one of the, just a clever, witty um, science fiction character. Um, he's a scientist who's trying to um, figure out his way, he, trying to figure out what makes time travel work. He, been building, he's been building ideas, he's building a time machine out of a DeLorean. Originally, it was going to be a fridge. That's a bit of film trivia for you. Um, yeah, and he pretty much um, wants Marty McFly's help to record what, he, his, um, what he's doing and if he's doing it well. And um, he uses his dog Einstein and um, the dog goes um, into time travel. Um, and just appears like a ten minutes later, uh, like five to ten, what a minute later coming out. I think Dr. Emmett, uh, Christopher Lloyd is just electrifying because he's clever, he's witty, he's um, he's really happy that he managed to get time travel to work, and I think it's excellent to see. I think it's just absolutely incredible, just seeing the joy and the different emotions that Christopher Lloyd can play. Maybe he's just like gobsmacked that he has to help me create 1.21 gigawatts to get um, Marty back to his own time stream point in 1985. Uh, I, you know, and he has the sheer happiness when he's with his lady friend in Back to the Future 3 and how he's not inhuman in the way he reacts, he feels like that father figure to Marty, but just as well maybe a, a loving husband to that lady friend of Back to the Future 3, which I think it's a, he's a great sympathetic scientific um, character that I think old men can really uh, relate to, and I can definitely say the same for Marty McFly. No matter how annoying Michael J. Fox's accent can be, I think that he's still a really resourceful teenager. He doesn't just run in situations, he can get out of them easily. He tries to put um, Lorraine, that's it, and um, George together again once he's in 1955 and how, you know, he kind of run into his mum and how his mum kind of falls in love with him. But they, re they really need to get Lorraine and George together and it, and, it kind of, kind of, and it can be hard. And you're just hoping in the film that they do to get together in order for Marty to pretty much have, a, have that future where he wanted that truck, the truck at the beginning of the film. Oh, that's great because plot points are there and they could be resolved. I think it's great. There's no plot holes to be seen whatsoever. Um, oh my god, this movie is just brilliant when you think about it. And it's been a few months since I've seen both 1, 2 and 3. Oh, but seriously guys, I think you should definitely see this trilogy if you haven't. Or go rewatch it because, my god, I really do think that the plot points, they, they make sense. Everything, the story makes sense. You know, it's a time travel movie. The, these can't be really executed well, but the direction by Robert Zemeckis is brilliant. Some of the special effects is like, great. I think um, the fire effects that goes through Doc Brown and Marty McFly's um, legs through the through the, um, the shot of the DeLorean going, I think it's a, you know it's that it's that one iconic image where Doc Brown finally gets it working and is brilliant. And the cinematography is absolutely flawless. And Steven Spielberg definitely. Um, you can see was at the helm of that, and I can definitely say that it is a Spielberg kind of film, absolutely, um, without a shadow of a doubt. And it's, whew, it's the sequels are just as enjoyable. I see them as one as one huge sequel because, of course, um, the second one was made in 1989, and the third one was made in 1990, and they kind of were pretty much linked anyway because they um, at the end of Back to the Future Two was a snippet of Back to the Future Three, pretty much. So I, I see it as one enjoyable sequel and it's just more of those amazing characters and it, and it's really resolved just tearfully at the end of Back to the Future 3 when you, we were never going to really see these characters again. 
a fourth one would have been nice, but I think as a trilogy, it is absolutely superb. Is has there any being anything I haven't said that's already have been said really? Because Back to the Future is just one of those amazing trilogies where the screenplay is absolutely brilliant, the characters are electrifying, the, the supporting cast is just as well, my last thing is great with Leah Thompson as Lorraine and um, you know the guy who plays George and Fly. Biff is a constant pisser. Um, during the three films and it is absolutely engaging and amazing to see and I could just watch it over and over and over again and never ever, ever get bored it's one of the best pieces of film out there at the moment so that was Back to the Future and it's been a hell of a time travelling ride and I'll see you guys in the next video later